Hello, it's Riyad, and um, um, actually this video is the last video of renal hemodynamic. Um, and you remember, guys, we did the, we I, I just did approach about this efferent and efferent dilatation and dilation and constriction. And I ask you, you know, just to repeat the videos again and again, and maybe you can now make another approach, which is basically I feel this approach is more interesting. So basically, so so what we have. We have an increase in hydrostatic pressure again. This is in capillary system, and we have either I or either we have decreased hydrostatic pressure in the capillary system. I think this is really interesting approach. Now, what are the causes? Why the hydrostatic pressure increase in the capillary system? So basically, you have two causes. Either either I have dilation afferent, right? Or constriction infinite. If you will go to the first video, you will understand that basically maybe more. But uh, this is a kind of advanced approach. So be, so either if you have constriction of efferent or dilation of efferent, this is the way that hydrostatic pressure increases. And if you remember the first video when we talked about hydrostatic pressure, that's mean GFR here, guys. Assuming assuming encotic pressures and these stuff are okay, but Let's let's yeah let's don't confuse you with a lot. So let's, let's stick with hydrostatic pressure high. So basically, you have two causes for increased hydrostatic pressure so far: dilation efferent and constriction efferent. What else? Now, how about renal plasma flow? If you dilate efferent, renal plasma flow will be increased, right? So you will have more flow. Because basically you just dilate the system. And if you remember this diagram, if you dilate the system from the beginning, so basically you will have more flow. So the flow will be increased. Constrict and efferent. You constrict, you just, you know, just compress it. That's why renal, sorry, renal plasma flow will be decreased. So this is another thing. So, so far, really I like it. It's a kind of interesting. Two causes of increased hydrostatic pressure, but remember, one of them is decreased. Renal plasma flow, and the other one is increased renal plasma flow. How about the other one? Decrease hydrostatic pressure. Also, you have two causes for decreased hydrostatic pressure. Either you constrict the efferent, right? Let's make it capital, or dilate efferent. Right so far? Hopefully you you remember that from the last video, and I think you can. Constri if you const again, if you constrict the system from the beginning, that's why. That's really I think makes sense. Hydrostatic pressure will be just decreased, right? And if you dilate the efferent, if you dilate in efferent, you'll have more flow. That's why the hydrostatic pressure will be decreased. And it also now makes more sense if you constrict the system. So basically, renal plasma. Okay, let's go down. Renal plasma flow will be decreased, right? And dilate efferent renal plasma flow will be increased. And I forget about this errors. So, guys, when you look at whole pictures, really it is much much easier because you will get you will get all of options in the in, the, in one question in one question. Now, is it the, uh, that's it? No, that's not it. There is another thing which is basically uncotic pressure. Uncotic pressure in the capillary. And if you remember the first one, I, I, I don't think I talked about that, but guys, if you have more flow, always, always, more flow, uncotic pressure will be decreased. Less flow, uncotic pressure will be increased. Less flow, uncotic pressure will be increased. More flow, uncotic pressure will be decreased. Always, always opposite. I mean, uncotic pressure in the capillary, not in Bowman's capsule. Uncotic pressure in the capillary, not on Bowman's capsule. And the reason why, if you, it's not so hard, basically. Imagine here you have high fluid and high flow. If you have high fluid and high flow, now the concentration of albumin will be less. Look at this, you just have four. Because you have high fluid, so the movement of the fluid will just shift the albumin out. That's why the concentration of albumin will be low. That's why you will have decrease in uncotic pressure. And the opposite is just makes sense. If you have less uh, flow, basically, if the flow is a kind of uh, stasis, right? 
you will see high albumin particles still in the systems. That's why anclotic corrosion will be decreased. These are very high yield points because you, you because I'm I'm uh, even when I was studying that before I was thinking most of the, most of us are good at this point basically most of us are as good maybe with renal plasma flow and dilation efferent and efferent we cannot link between renal plasma flow and narcotic pressure and again these are very high yield it's not so he it's not it's not so hard it's very easy if the renal plasma flow high and narcotic pressure low always always make it the opposite always just the opposite so again i think this is really high yield and now i think this diagram is uh, I'm sure, guys, you, you, you'll get at least one or two of these vascular renal questions, very high yield. And I think now it makes sense. You don't need to memorize it. Again, hydrostatic pressure high, you have two differential. Dilation efferent, constriction efferent. How you'll differentiate, go to renal plasma flow. If you'll see renal plasma flow high, this dilation efferent, you'll see low constriction efferent. And the flip, well, the oncotic pressure. And the opposite side, and the, and the opposite will be decreased hydrostatic pressure, either constrict efferent, sorry, constrict afferent, or dilate efferent and also the cadrea plasma flow just makes sense according to the system whether it's overflow or whether you constrict the system and make the oncotic pressure just you know just the opposite of renal plasma flow okay hopefully this is easy for you and good luck see you soon